Barney, where were you on December 7th, 1941? At 7.55 in the morning, Barney. <laughs> I was standing on the deck of the USS Blue, a destroyer. I had got up early that morning, and uh, I was getting ready to go to church services. We were all alone out there at, at this buoy, tied up. And I was waiting for a motor launch to pick me up and take me to a larger ship where they had a chaplain. I'm talking uh, with this shipmate of mine waiting for the motor launch. And all at once, I saw this plane go by our ship. The fellow with me said, that's a Jap plane. She went down and she dropped the torpedo and I saw the USS Utah turn over. When we were in Pearl like that, to get out of the sun, we always had awnings back over the back end of the ship. I didn't know uh, really what to do. The searchlight was my battle station, but there was no need for being a, on a searchlight at 7.55 in the morning. Not only that, but two-thirds of the crew was allowed to go ashore. They had weekend passes. So the only ones aboard were those that had the duty. So I started to, uh, to help with the awning, get it down. As I was doing that, the chief gunner's mate came, came up, breaking the locks on the ammunition, because everything was locked up, you know, for fear that somebody might go in there with a cigarette or something. He said to me, uh, Ross, follow me. So he took me down into number three magazine. He says, I want you to take powder and shells and send it up to the gun. And he showed me how to operate the hoist. So that's what I did. I'd get a shell. The shells weighed about 80 pounds, I think. When I was, when I was uh, you know, 19 or 20 years old, I, that was nothing. I could pick one of those up. I'd take a shell, and then I'd take a bag of powder, and I'd put it in the hoist, and I'd send it up to the gun. In the meantime, we're getting, uh, we're getting underway. All we had aboard that ship that morning was one Annapolis graduate and three reserve ensigns. That's all we had. All the top officers were ashore. We managed to get underway. I don't know to this day why we didn't get straight or take a torpedo, but we didn't. We got outside of the exit of the harbor and we started dropping depth charges. There was Japanese submarines out there. We got credit for, for two of them and we got credit for knocking down four planes on the way out. While we were doing all this, there was the USS Phoenix and the St. Louis four or five destroyers. Our duty was to try to find a Japanese fleet. But we never found them, and I'm awfully glad we did because they went in there with six carriers, three battleships, 10 or 15 cruisers, and about 20 destroyers. Uh, the planes alone would have taken care of us. I was thankful that we uh, never found them. We were out there 36 hours without finding them. When we came back into uh, Pearl, it was pitch dark, and we could see the fires burning uh, in the harbor. Where were you on December 7, 1941? I was playing basketball at the Army, uh, at the uh, Naval War College in Washington, D.C. We were playing uh, uh, the Navy that day. And about 1 o'clock in the afternoon, they stopped the game. They said, wait a minute, you're all ordered back to your barracks. The Japanese ju just bombed Pearl Harbor. That was it. That's how we heard about it. So we went back to the barracks, and of course they had all the... That was before the big TVs and all this other stuff. By radio, we all heard that the Japanese had bombed Pearl Harbor. So that's where I was, in Washington, playing basketball that Sunday afternoon. What was your reaction? Well... Number one, uh, you know, it was kind of hard to fathom what happened because today you couldn't, like, you know, when you had 9-11 here, it was on TV 20 minutes later. It didn't happen at Pearl Harbor. It took days and days to get all this information. You know, we were all shocked, but we were mad. How could they attack the United States? My main job was I was assigned to the uh, Marine Guard that uh, protected the president at the time. As you and I are talking, today is December the 8th. December the 8th was the date that FDR gave his famous Day of Infamy speech, 64 years ago today. He was a great man, a great president. I was honored to be part of the White House Guard because here you are protecting your president. Saw him on many occasions. Yeah. Were you present at the Day of Infamy speech? Yeah, I was there. Yeah, the Day of Infamy speech, like to say, it was tonight. We were in the barracks. 
and they call out the names of 12 or 14 Marines, and they say, you guys get your blues on. We're going to go to the U.S. House of Representatives. I said, what are we going to go there for? I didn't know about the speech at that time. So we got to the Capitol building and to the House of Representatives chambers. There must have been four or 500 people there. At that time, the crowds were smaller than they would have been today. You know, about 5,000 people today. Then it was about four or 500. So when we got there, that's when uh, FDR gave his day of infamy speech. And uh, it was one of the most intriguing speeches I've ever heard in my life. I've been around the world quite a number of times. Yeah. Great, great president, great speech. And uh, he, that was the day he said, okay, let's go get him. And how did you hear about Pearl Harbor? Uh, I was hunting on Ridge Street at the time with my oldest brother. And uh, we had a radio in the car. And uh, we heard it on the radio as we were uh, coming back from hunting and uh, rabbit hunting. And, uh, and we thought it was quite devastating. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, that was uh, December 7th of 41. My brother uh, enlisted in the Marines in four, first part of 42. And then I had another brother that was in the Army and he, he was in the National Guard, or the State Guard at the time. And then he, uh, he enlisted in the Army, and we lost him over in Anzio uh, Beachhead mm -hmm. uh, in 40, uh, 44. And uh, that's the pearls of uh, war. Um, where were you December 7th? I remember the day like it was yesterday. It was Sunday afternoon, and we were the people I lived with, they had two daughters, and we were dancing around with our big band kind of music, and it came over the radio about Pearl Harbor. Of course, we were just stunned, and then we all started calling up the people, boys that we went with that were in the service, just, you know, right away, and I guess everybody in the United States was doing the same thing because you couldn't get through, and it was just a terrible time, scary, and, and it was something, see, I never thought would happen. I just, it was foolish because a lot of young people when we were at the beach and all would talk about the coming war. They thought that the uh, Germans would invade Czechoslovakia. And I was one of those naive, like, oh, no, we've never had war in, in our time. And it won't happen, you know. So it was like I couldn't believe such a horrible thing would happen. Where was I? I was on Warren Street in front of Lenny Bullock's uh, newsroom. He had a newsstand out front, had a table with all the newspapers on them, and a big strap across it with rocks on it, holding the headlines were, Japs bomb Pearl Harbor, okay? So I looked at Ted Toomey, and he looked at me, and, and I beat him to it. I says, where the hell is Pearl Harbor? Well, but not quite a year later, I knew where Pearl Harbor is because uh, we came in on a ship and uh, uh, when we entered the harbor, and I'll never forget this, is you couldn't hear a thing. Uh, the only thing you heard was the slush of the water as the boat was going in. And we saw all these ships laying over on their side, and so that's where I was and ended up in Pearl Harbor.